Greetings Young Investor Society. My name is James Fletcher, founder of Young Investor Society. And today we're going to talk about step three in the five steps to financial freedom, which is to create a financial plan. And a couple of objectives during the lesson today is to get it, gain an understanding of what are short-term goals and what are long-term goals, and to understand what SMART goals are and to start creating SMART goals in our life. Okay, so ready? Let's begin with a question. How much money do you think you need to make to be considered wealthy? Think about that question. And then think about why you want to build wealth. What are the reasons why it would be important to you to be financially free or to have wealth? Retirement is something that people look forward to. And retirement may be different for everyone. So retirement may be retiring at age 65 and sitting on a beach or playing golf. But retirement may also mean working, earning money, and um, pivoting from one career to doing something um, service-oriented or doing a career, maybe teaching school, or doing something that is more meaningful, more aligned with your passions. Um, people may call this semi-retirement. But at what age would you like to be at the financial stage where you could do anything you wanted? Um, how much money do you think you would need to retire, to, re to be at this stage? So let's, let's think about these numbers. Do you think it would be between 250,000 and 500,000? Do you think it would be between 500,000 and 750,000? What about 750 to a million dollars? What about a million dollars to two million dollars? Or do you think you need over two million dollars? Think about this question. What do you think you would need realistically to retire? The reality is that the majority of people need over two million dollars to retire. Now I know this seems like a huge sum of money, and it is, and it requires saving and starting early. But two million dollars um, to sustain a lifestyle um, is, is the normal amount that, that we need to save. Why is this number perhaps higher than you expected? There's lots of reasons. Think of the reasons why it could cost more to retire. One is health care. The cost of health care is rising. Two is life expectancies. People are living longer and longer. Three is uh, people's lifestyles um, are higher and people travel around the world and want to uh, keep a certain amount of lifestyle. And so for all of these reasons, um, we need to be able to save and uh, accumulate wealth so that we can be financially free and, and be able to retire. Let's talk about what some of your goals are. And when we talk about goals, we can talk about short-term goals and long-term goals. So what are the difference and, and how have you gone about setting your goals in your life? So when you went about setting your goals, how did you set them? How did you know whether you've attained them? And how realistic are the goals that you've set in the past? So did you set the goal of, you know, when I was young I wanted to walk on the moon when I was 18 or I wanted to, you know, get into this prestigious college? Um, or, or are we setting goals that are their stretch goals but still realistic? So let's learn how to set goals. And one of the best goal setting techniques is the SMART system. So S-M-A-R-T goals. The S stands for specific. Having something specific that you can measure is key to creating a goal that you can measure and, um, and um, improve upon. The second one is this goal needs to be measurable. So specific and measurable. The third is the A, and this, this goal should be attainable. My childhood dream of walking on the moon may not have been attainable before the age of 18. The, the fourth one is the goal should be relevant. It should be in line with your experience and um, what you've achieved in the past. And the fifth one is the goal should be timely. So you should set a time limit um, where you can specifically measure this realistic and you can measure it in a certain amount of time. So that is a SMART goal and we're going to watch a video now on what SMART goals are. This is 
Wanda Roberts with Michigan State University Extension. And today we're going to talk about SMART goals. SMART stands for Specific, Measurable, Attainable, Realistic, and Time-bound. So when we think about writing a goal, particularly about our money, we might say, I want to save money. Well, that sounds okay, but to be more specific, I will save $1,500 for a family vacation by December 31st. That's pretty specific. The commitment is to save $1,500. So as we think about, can we measure it? Well, by December 31st, we'll either have $1,500 or we won't. And it is attainable. We know we have enough extra money in our budget after we've paid all our bills to save $150 each month for 10 months. And it's realistic. It's really not too much money. It's not like we're saying we want to save $100,000 in 10 months. And it's time bound. The date is set. We've committed to December 31st. So that's a little quick peek at creating a SMART goal. I hope you enjoyed that video. Now we have a handout and this is for you personally to set your own SMART goals. So think S-M-A-R-T and set a couple of short-term goals that you have in your life and set a couple of long-term goals. And then we will come back and review these and set some numbers to when you would like to achieve it and how much you will need to save and how you will attain this goal. I hope you enjoyed this handout and more importantly I hope that the goals that you set that you wrote down right now will become realistic and you will actually start making steps to attain these goals. So what are some examples in, in this activity? Um, short term goal for you may be going to college and so let's say you're two years away from starting college and um, let's assume that the college that you want to go to costs ten thousand dollars per year and it's a four-year program so you will need approximately forty thousand dollars to um, during those four years during university um, if you assume that um, thirty thousand dollars you will take out loans for or be able to work for but let's say your goal is to save ten thousand dollars before you start university how will you attain this goal so here we have a clear number we need to save ten thousand dollars in two years, so how much do we have to save each month to reach that goal? And we can do the math, it's $416 per month. So how are we going to earn $416 per month so that we have that money saved when we begin college? That's an example of a good short-term goal that is uh, following the SMART pattern. What about long-term goals? So let's, let's say you had the long-term goal of to buy a house. You want to buy a house 15 years from now. And let's say the cost of this house you estimate will be about $250,000. So if it's $250,000 and you need to put 20% down on this house, then you need $50,000 to save up so that you can buy your first house and, and be a property owner. So let's assume that for the next five years you'll go to college and, and you won't be saving during that period. But after that, you have 10 years where you'll be saving money and getting ready for the down payment on your house. So what is the math? Over 10 years, you need to save $5,000. Um, you need to save $50,000. So that means to buy your first house, you need to save $5,000 per year once you start your first career. Now you have a clear idea in your mind of how to achieve this long-term goal. So I hope this helps and I hope, I hope you've done the same in your goals and more importantly I hope that you will be able to stick to these and start building wealth in the future. So what are the steps to establishing goals? We talked about how the goals should be, SMART goals. We follow a couple steps. First is to list your goals 
and the second is to divide up your goals according to how long it will take to meet each goal. So what are the short-term goals and what are the long-term goals? The next one is to estimate the cost of each goal. Um, next is to calculate how much you need to set aside each month or each period to reach this goal. And then you want to prioritize them. So, so in, our, in our example before, you may want to prioritize saving for college, your short-term goal, before you start saving to buy a house. And in our example, we gave ourselves a grace period of five years so that we could have a priority of when we will use it. And then the last one is to create a schedule for when you should meet these goals and hold yourself accountable. Tell people about your schedule of how you're hoping to achieve your goals. I hope this lesson helped. Setting a financial plan is one of the key parts to building wealth. It's one thing to save money, but it's another thing to know why you're saving money and how much money you have to save. And setting smart goals and establishing priorities will set you on your way to achieving financial success. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that lesson and let's tackle the FAQs or the frequently asked questions when we teach this unit. Okay, so the first one is, um, what is the difference um, when we're talking about SMART goals? What is the difference between a specific goal and a relevant goal? Um, it's a great question. Um, so a specific goal is um, a specific goal that is um, clearly defined and is something that you're able to define and work towards. Relevant is one that is a little more difficult to explain, but basically a, re re a relevant goal is something that is worthwhile to you. So you may have a specific goal that is measurable, that's attainable, but is something that you don't really care about or something that is just um, um, completely outside of your normal life or your desires or your passions. Um, relevant means that this goal means something to you. It means something to the people around you. And so um, that's what we mean by a relevant goal. Um, next question, how do I estimate the cost of a goal? Um, it's a great question. So some things are easy to measure the cost. College tuition uh, may be easier to measure the cost of how much this goal will cost. But other things are more ambiguous. How do I measure the cost of um, um, having the financial freedom to, to take a career that's a step down but something that I really want to do? Or how do I measure the cost of a medical emergency? Or how do I measure the cost of um, living in a city where the cost of living may be much, much higher than today? Um, the reality is that we should do our homework. We, su we should research um, costs of things in our life. Um, I think when we did the the budgeting activity with Sarah um, and the, the um, personal budget um, web quest, it's, there are a couple things on there that are probably surprising, like I'm surprised how much housing costs, I'm surprised how much taxes cost, I'm surprised how much it costs to buy a house, I'm surprised how much it costs to retire. So it's good to go through the exercise of estimating these big amounts in your life, but at the same time it's good to know that um, there are some expenses in our life that are just unknowable and some things will be more expensive in the future than they are now and so that's why we always um, budget in a uh, margin of safety or reserve into our budget. Um, the next question that, that we received is how do I account for unforeseen expenses or emergency expenses in my financial plan? This is a great question. Um, one of the things we talk about is creating a, a, an emergency fund. So we should always have cash on hand um, to meet emergencies. These may be um, automobile costs that, that we did not expect, medical costs, um, and, and we, we ideally want the flexibility so that if the economy is tough or we lose our job or we're going through a tough situation that we can account for these expenses. Um, if we are in the period where an emergency comes about and that may impact our long-term goals, um, we all go through these periods. And so building up that buffer, saving as much as you can, preparing for those emergency unforeseen expenses, 
and then still maintaining an eye on those long-term goals is the way to balance um, that you will have in your financial plan. So those are great questions and I hope this helps and good luck in setting your personal financial plans.